Despite being a big fan of point-and-click adventure games as a kid, I have to confess that I was never that into Leisure Suit Larry. I liked his outdated fashion and crass sense of humor, but the games always felt one note and couldn't hold my attention. I went into his newest adventure, Wet Dreams Don't Dry, worried that it was going to be a celebration of everything I didn't like about those old games. Despite the dumb subtitle, this is a smart and often clever point-and-clicker that perfectly justifies his existence by turning Larry into a fish-out-of-water character who is endlessly confused by the 21st century. For as much as this game is about hooking up, it also underlines just how much the dating scene has changed in the last 30 years. At this point, Larry Laffer is basically Austin Powers. He literally stumbles out of the year 1987 at the beginning of the game, completely oblivious to the fact that it's now 2018. He's still the 40-year-old loser that we loved back in the day, only now he's a little taller and drawn in HD. Unfortunately, the rest of the world has moved on without him, and they don't seem particularly interested in waiting for the hopeless bachelor to catch up. He's never heard of the internet, is completely confused by smartphones, and is still trying to figure out where all the taxis have gone. This is not the world that Larry remembers. As luck would have it, our bewildered hero stumbles across a discarded smartphone in Lefty's bathroom. But it's not just any old smartphone, because this is the super secret prototype device created by Bill Jobs at the nearby Prune Factory. Bill wants the phone back, but Larry wants to get a date with the sexy woman that works at Prune. This inspires our horny hero to get back in the game and improve his online dating score, all in hopes of winning over that woman who is way outside of his league. This sets up a fun little adventure game where Larry tries to hook up with all kinds of women and men on a Tinder-like app. At its best, this allows our monumentally clueless hero to explore the differences between 1987 and today. And that goes far beyond simply learning to swipe left or right because Larry's entered a more open and social society that frowns on a lot of the chauvinistic antics that were considered acceptable 30 years ago. Larry has always been out of step with the world around him, but now he's a walking, talking reminder of how much the world has changed in just a few decades. In some ways, this juxtaposition makes Larry a more compelling character. It helps that, despite coming across as incredibly creepy most of the time, Mr. Laffer is always good-natured. He's often confused and usually says the wrong thing at the worst possible time, but he's not mean or judgmental. Even when he's clearly thrust into uncomfortable situations, he ends up being an understanding guy who is willing to do whatever it takes. It would have been so easy to turn Larry into the butt of every joke, but he's floating around a city filled with characters who are somehow even more over the top than the guy wearing the white leisure suit. Now, as a point-and-click adventure game, you've seen a lot of this before. This is the kind of game that loads you up with all kinds of items that you don't even know what to do with. In fact, there's so much to pick up and interact with that there will be times where you'll hit a wall and just have to try every item combination until you figure it out. Not every puzzle has a logical solution, and sometimes it feels like a game errs on the side of luck and persistence rather than well-thought-out solutions. There were more than a few times where I just shook my head in disbelief after I stumbled into what the developers wanted me to do. I think part of the problem is that the game throws too many items at you at once. It's often overwhelming, even as somebody who spent a lot of time playing this style of point-and-click adventure game. There are times when you'll have more than two dozen items to contend with, which is a lot to juggle, especially if it's not always clear what you're supposed to do with any of these objects. And it's not that other modern games in the genre don't have you picking up items, but they rarely have you keeping track of this much at one time. It's kind of overkill and will complicate an already convoluted story. On the other hand, once you break through the wall and figure out what you're supposed to do next, it usually clears a fairly obvious path where you're completing a bunch of puzzles one after another. I don't want to oversell how frustrating this game can be, because your goals are generally pretty straightforward. There's a cam girl who won't move out of the apartment Larry wants until she gets a better job, a rocker who won't date our hero until he finds her stolen guitar, a fitness instructor who refuses to be impressed until we prove our physical strength, Everybody has something they want from Larry, which has us Ubering all over town in hopes of getting a happy ending. 
A lot of the charm comes from the voice acting and colorful cast of characters. From the self-obsessed millennials, to the conspiracy theorists, to the Apple Store employees, everybody knows exactly who they're mocking, so there's no subtlety here. There are a lot of obvious jokes and observations here, to the point where it sometimes feels like they're going after low-hanging fruit. I like the characters and the voice cast that brought them all to life, but I wish the game would have found more ways to subvert expectations. And that's a criticism that rings true across the board. There are a lot of absurdly predictable and obvious plot points that keep us from the more interesting elements. I loved seeing the difference between generations through Larry's eyes, but they didn't go far enough with it. There's a really interesting game to be made about how a guy from the 1980s would deal with the Me Too generation. The Leisure Suit Larry mostly opts for cheap shots at millennials. While I still enjoy the adventure Larry goes on, I could never shake the feeling that there's a much more biting commentary waiting to break free from this fairly routine point and clicker. Although it's not as cutting as it could have been, Leisure Suit Larry, Wet Dreams Don't Dry is an inspired new take on the hapless bachelor. This is a fun way to explore the generational differences between dating in the 1980s and modern day, and I like the colorful cast of characters they've assembled in the city of new lost wages. On the other hand, the game tends to throw too many items at you and the puzzles can be a bit nonsensical at times. Although occasionally overwhelming, I found a lot to like about Larry Laffer's first new adventure in more than a decade. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now here's the question I have for you. What old school video game hero would not do well in the 21st century? The obvious answer is Duke Nukem, though maybe that's too on the nose. Then there are all those Castlevania heroes that are from like five and six hundred years ago. So who knows how well they would hold up in modern times. I can't wait to see your picks in the comments below. In other news, I'm hard at work on reviews of Grip, Drowning, Emerald Shores, and a few horror games I couldn't get to before Halloween. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.